Chris O'Malley asking Christian Wood to Boston. I like this. I like this a lot because Christian Wood's uh, value right now, according to Bobby Marks VSPN, is around that nine million mark. Which I think is crazy because I think he's worth at least 12 to 15 million at this point because he's still super young. I think he'd be a great fit in Boston. My only problem is with Boston, you already have Robert Williams, you already have Ennis Cantor. You, uh, I guess you don't. He's a free agent. You have Daniel Tice. You also have Vincent Poirier. You also have Grant Williams. You also have Jason Tatum. Those guys all play the big position. Christian Wood is a forward or sometimes a center. But if you commit to playing him at the center alongside Tatum, I think it could work. If you're a Celtic fan, you want to keep up with what they're going to do all offseason long, whether it's in free agency or in the NBA draft where they have three first-round picks, you're going to want to make sure you subscribe to chatsports.com slash Celtics TV. That link is in the comments and it's in the description as well. If you're a Celtics fan or if you're just a generic NBA fan, you're not going to want to miss anything I put out on that channel. It's chatsports.com slash Celtics TV. John Hines says, who is your biggest sleeper? in the NBA draft. Man, one guy I really, really like, and I don't even know if he's a sleeper at this point because apparently teams are climbing up the board on him. Um, I love Desmond Bain out of TCU. The kid just does everything that you need. I mean, plays great defense. He can handle the ball. He can shoot the ball. He's a super strong finisher. If you've seen the guy, he looks like he's hitting the gym every single day. I got to go work out with him in Fort Worth or something because the kid just gets it done. I really, really like Desmond Bain. I'm trying to think of some second-round players that I like. Uh, I mean, I've seen Daniel Aturu pretty low on a lot of draft boards, uh, which I think is crazy because I think if he works hard enough, he can be at the same, like, close to what DeAndre Ayton is in a lot of aspects, but maybe not that good. Um, I'd, I'd say those two guys. I'll go Daniel Aturu, who's the big man out of uh, Minnesota, and Desmond Bain out of TCU. Those are probably my two biggest sleepers in this year's draft. Matthew Phipps coming in says Minnesota acquires Ben Simmons, Zaire Smith. Philly acquires the number one pick, Jarrett Culver, Josh Okogie, and Amari Spellman. Hmm. I think, oh man, this is tough. I think, God, you guys are sending in some good trades today. This one's actually making me think. I think Philadelphia says no. Um, I love, man, Okogie, Culver, and Spellman are all really, really good, but Amari Spellman's already gotten moved once. The number one pick maybe gets you Anthony Edwards. Well, I don't know because they could take LaMelo Ball. Dang it, Matthew. You got me all tripped up here. I'm going to say Philly says no, but I think it's really, really close, and I do think this could actually be a trade that gets done. I am whew, really all over the place, and I'll tell you what. If something like that does get done, and we're going to have it first here on Chat Sports, and we're going to be live breaking down the entire thing at youtube.com slash chat sports TV. V, help us get some more subscribers. We just hit 200K. I want to hit 300K. And all you guys got to do is subscribe. If you like what we're doing here, if you like all of our NBA cov coverage, you're also going to love all of our NFL coverage. So make sure you subscribe today. Ian Dudge Vanilla Vil Villanea says, who is your 3 and D player in this draft? The best overall guy that can do both is Sadiq Bey out of Villanova. That kid is shoots the lights out. Plays incredible defense. He's got a super long wingspan. In fact, so long that probably his – you see where my elbow goes on the screen? His elbow would probably be off the screen. It's just that long. I, I really like Sadiq Bey. I think he's going to be a guy that helps a team win right now. Um, but I do think there are some other good options as well. Desmond Bain, the guy that I said was my sleeper earlier, is one. Devin Vassell out of Florida State is another one. I'd probably mm, – I'm back and forth. I probably lean Devin Vassell as a better overall player than Sadiq Bey right now. But purely 3 and D, I'll go Sadiq Bey. Out of Villanova. Shadman Huda says Tyrese Maxey or RJ Hampton? I go Tyrese Maxey. Uh, RJ Hampton is going to be fun to watch, but Maxey is going to be the safer pick. If you go with Tyrese Maxey, I think he's a guy that at worst is a backup defensive guard that comes in and just plays strong defense for you for about 20 minutes a night. At his worst. At his best, he's probably a starting point guard someday in this league. Maybe a Marcus Smart type guy. With RJ Hampton, at his best... He's probably like your second leading scorer on a really good playoff team. At his worst, though, he's out of the league after his rookie contract is up. I, I'm so up and down on RJ Hampton, so I'll go with Tyrese Maxey on that one. Orlando28 says, Wiggins, 2020 first-round pick and 2021 first-round pick for Vucevic and Aaron Gordon. Ooh, that's a good one, Orlando. Good question there. Um, I, I think 
I think Golden State would like this a lot because if you think about it, it makes perfect sense. You can slide Gordon into the three with Draymond standing at the four, and Vucevic immediately becomes your starting center. So your starting five is Steph, Clay Thompson, Andrew uh, or Aaron Gordon, excuse me, Draymond Green, and Nikola Vucevic. That's really good. If you are the Orlando Magic, you get Andrew Wiggins to build around for a little bit longer alongside young guys like Jonathan Isaac, although he is hurt right now, Mo Bamba, and Markel Fultz. You get this year's second overall pick, which you could take a new big man to replace a Vucevic, like an Onyeka Kongwu or a James Wiseman. And then 2021 first-round pick, oh, man, this is perfect. Both teams say yes. They both, it gets done. I think this trade gets done. Make it happen. Put the, uh, put the trade call into the NBA right now. And if you're a Warriors fan and you want whoever they're going to draft at number two or you want a Steph Curry, Clay Thompson, Draymond, or you don't have your Andrew Wiggins jersey yet, go to chatsports.com slash NBA jerseys. And here's the thing. Let's say you go out and get an Andrew Wiggins jersey because you think he's going to be the answer for the long haul, and then he gets traded. Guess what? They have jersey insurance. So if he does get traded, you can get that jersey replaced with our friends at Fanatics, chatsports.com slash NBA jerseys, your favorite team, your favorite player, all authentic jerseys available right now at Fanatics. Emmanuel Corker just says, Hawks trade ideas? Uh, not even a question mark. It's just a, just a statement. No, but I, I don't think they're going to make a lot of trades this year, this offseason. I think they're going to be a team that looks to use their draft picks and stays put with guys like John Collins, Trey Young, Kevin Herter, DeAndre Hunter, Cam Reddish, all solid role players. The one thing I could see them doing is using that number six overall pick and packaging it with a player maybe like uh, a, a DeAndre Hunter, maybe if they believe Cam Reddish is going to be better, and moving up to that second overall pick and taking a guy they really, really like. Don't forget, they also have Clint Capella, who hasn't played with this team yet. So I think they'll stand pretty pat this offseason. D Bolt one says Celtics get TJ Warren and Miles Turner. Pacers get Hayward, Cantor, 14th pick, and the Celtics' first-round pick. The problem is, number one, Ennis Cantor is a free agent. Well, I guess he's a $5 million player option, so he could te technically be on the book. So let's assume he opts in, and it's Hayward, Cantor, 14, and another first. <sighs> I think Indiana's going to say no. I think they really value TJ Warren now. And here's the thing. Warren is probably a little bit better right now than Gordon Hayward, just, just by a smidge. Miles Turner is better than Ennis Cantor. 14th pick is kind of a huge mystery. And then the Celtics' first-round pick, we don't really know what that's going to be at the end of the first round. So I think Indy says no, but this is close to being able to get it done. Paul Christian says top three draft prospects in 2021. Number one, Cade Cunningham, go Pokes. Number two, Jalen Green. So that kid's going to be coming out of the G League. Uh, I really, really like him. Is Amani Bates in 2021? i got to look this up now. Uh, but if Amani Bates is there at tw in the 2021 draft, he has to be the best. No, he's not. So, man, I'll go Jalen Green, Cade Cunningham, and probably Evan Mos uh, Mosley. Excuse me. Evan Mo or, oh, Mobley. Golly, I can't talk. Evan Mobley out of USC is a big man who can kind of do it all. So those will be my top three, but the top two are real easy for me. Ian Dudge Villanea says, should the Lakers sign the Morris brothers? If they're willing to take the minimum and the mid-level, like I think Marcus Morris probably gets the mid-level and Markeith Morris probably gets the minimum, then yeah, sure. But we've seen what the Morris brothers do when they're on the same team. When they were in Phoenix, they got into a lot of legal trouble. You don't want them on the same team. You want to keep those two as far as possible. Keep, keep Marcus Morris, put him back on the Knicks, and uh, keep Markeith over here in Los Angeles. Just keep them as far away from each other as possible. But when it comes to an actual playing standpoint, yeah, I think that would be pretty good for their, bu their bench there. Matthew Phipps says Miami gets Bradley Beal, Washington gets the first round pick, 2024 first round pick, Kendrick Nunn, Derek Jones Jr., and Casey Akpala. Casey Akpala is a guy that coming out of the draft I really, really liked, uh, and then he ended up really not doing anything as rookie. I can't remember if he got hurt or what happened with him, uh, but we didn't see a lot out of him. Their first round pick in 2020, I believe Miami has a later, yeah, they have the 20th overall pick. 2024, that doesn't really move the needle, the needle right now for Washington. Matthew, I liked your first trade idea. In fact, it almost got done. I think this one, Washington, just hangs up on them. Kendrick Nunn and Derrick Jones Jr. Eh. Plus, Derrick Jones Jr. is a free agent, so you never know what's going to happen. He might not even re-sign with the Miami Heat. Daniel says Oladipo and Holiday, so that would be Justin Holiday, in a sign-in trade to the Lakers for Kyle Kuzma, Danny Green, 
Quinn Cook and the 28th pick. This is the constant trade package from Laker fans uh, to be able to get anybody. For Oladipo, I do think this could get it done. For Oladipo and Justin Holiday, I don't think it happens unless Justin Holiday is just like, hey, I'm only signing so you can trade me. Uh, but Justin, Justin Holiday has been a good player. But from what I've heard, the Pacers actually want him back. They are not looking to trade him or let him walk in free agency. So I think the Pacers say no on this one. But if you take Holiday out of it, I think they absolutely say yes. But according to Brian Windhorst, NBA teams and the Lakers think that Kuzma Green in a first is too much for Victor Oladipo. But I like the idea, and I think it's, it's at least close to getting it done. All right, Paul Christian coming in and says, Andrew Wiggins to the Cavs, and then number 14, Jalen Brown to Golden State, Drummond in number two to Boston. So we got the Cavs, the Warriors, and Boston all mixed in in here. All right, so let me turn my brain, my thinking brain on so I can get this three-team trade all sorted out. Wiggins goes back to Cleveland where he was originally drafted. 14 and Jalen Brown go to Golden State, and then Drummond in number two go to Boston. I think Boston says no because Jalen Brown is way better than what you're going to get at the number two overall pick, in my opinion. And Andre Drummond, I, I mean, they like him, but I don't think they're in love with the idea of getting him. I think the Warriors would definitely say yes. And I think the Cavs would even say yes to this one as well. I think they would like Wiggins over Andre Drummond at this point. So almost close to getting it done. I think you're about two-thirds of the way there. But the problem is Boston is not going to give up Jalen Brown plus a lottery pick to get a guy in Andre Drummond that just hasn't really been that great these past few years. And then number two also doesn't really help them win all that much right now. But I think it's at least an interesting question there, Paul. And I think a three-team trade like that could potentially get it done. Ian Dudge Villanueva says, who's your 3 and D player in the draft? We talked about this one. I said Sadiq Bey out of Villanova. And I, I love Sadiq Bey. Uh, I think he's going to be the perfect fit. I think another guy is Devin Vassell out of Florida State. Definitely a strong contender uh, to be the top two 3 and D players in this year's draft. And I, Krishna Dev comes in and says, how much of a chance does Luka have to win the MVP next year? If not Luka, who do you think will be the MVP next year? So Luka's actually got the best odds in the NBA this season to win 2021 MVP. Giannis is right behind him to repeat uh, as the second best odds. I think Steph Curry is going to come in and just light it up this year. I do think he'll have an MVP type season, and I think he will be right back in the running. I think those will probably be your top three, maybe LeBron top three as well. I want to say Luke is going to be up there, but the Mavs have to be healthy because if they're not healthy, they're not going to win games. And if you're not winning games, you can't be in the MVP conversation. So I think Luke is probably top four. At least, actually, I'll say top three, at least top four, with a really good chance to win it if Chris Outs Porzingis is healthy.